Welcome back to the final episode of our Bigger Build series. Hopefully you've seen the other previous episodes where we've gone through lots of things. Today we're going to bring it all together, show you how we brought the whole kit together, how we screwed it all together, and then give you some demos of it working. So we started off by putting the servo into the servo mount that we 3D printed, then using the Dremel to drill some little holes ready for the screws to go in. Then we screwed these screws, these are the original servo horn screws that you get with the servo, screwed them in, and it ended up quite nicely tightly fitting, even with the 3D print kind of not having holes ready for it. Screwed in all four, and you can see the original servo shaft here uh, that we 3D printed, the blue bit coming out in the middle of the servo that you'll see later. And once we had that screwed in, it was actually pretty tight, it's not going anywhere, it will stay nice and firm. So then we moved on to the clock face, we put the old clock face over the new one, lined up the little four holes that are in the corner, we've got the original four screws, and this screws it onto the front of the clock. So we marked those just in the corners. Much easier doing this than trying to guess where they are, so it's quite handy to have it all around to do. And then we got the Dremel out and just drilled through the little marks that we'd made. It was quite tricky with the Dremel trying to use it as a drill, it just about worked, it didn't slip too much. And we drilled those four holes in the acrylic. Had to kind of clean up the acrylic afterwards because it left some bits around the edge, uh, but overall it was pretty good. Then as soon as we had that done, we are able to start screwing that onto the metal of the clock face uh, through the four original holes with the four little screws. Unfortunately in the middle of this I did manage to run the screwdriver across the face and make a very light scratch, so I might go back and get a new one laser etched. But they nicely went in. It's thicker than in the original plate, so the front of the case uh, holds quite well, but occasionally it popped open, so I just tweaked it a little bit. Um, but it does stay there quite nicely now, as you can see. Next we had a hot glue gun and put that in the middle of the small hand that we had to glue that to the front piece and then took that 3D printed uh, servo shaft that I talked about that we cut to the right length and just put that in the middle holding it all together and it holds pretty tight actually. It was uh, quite easy to do. And then as soon as that was dry, in just a few like, minutes, we were able to put that straight in through the clock face straight into the hole in the servo and that's really all it needs. It's not even glued in there, it means I can take it out and change it around and it shut quite nicely. Next we mounted the servo mount properly on the back of the um, case. It was already on there but we got the original washers that were there and these original kind of hex pieces that screw down on top, uh, one in each corner and they really hold that plate firmly in place but more critically they actually how the clock goes back together. So just screwed those on and then you'll see we put that back into the case and those come through holes in the back here and you can see these little brass mounts go over them. There's one of these for each corner, they fit on quite tightly. They're kind of cut so that the bolt is held by them a little bit, so they're quite tight. And then I've got the original nuts that we got off the back of these to put back on. Um, they're actually really tiny and there's not a lot of room around them within these little brass holdings, uh, so I had to manage to get a socket set piece that's the tiniest I could find that would still fit them and it just about fit in and kind of tightening them by hand. But once they were tightened they really held it uh, really firmly in place and it's not really going anywhere which was really helpful. All using the original fittings really which made it so much simpler than having to do it all ourselves. So the next step was taking the microprocessor, this is the particle spark hole that we used in the previous programming video. And what we need to do is to take the original servo connector where it's got three pins all together and we wanted to separate those because the ground and the power need to go to one uh, section of the spark core uh, and then the signal lead needs to go to the other side. So we just broke off the little plastic tab on these leads, it's really easy to do, and pulled out individually the signal lead which is the one we need separate pulled the wire little back, back a little bit and then was able to put the remaining kind of plug in the top corner for the power and ground. It was really easy to plug on and then the signal cable on the other side. And this meant we didn't need any soldering, we didn't need any breadboard inside it, kept it really small and really neat uh, but we'll keep it firmly in there, it's not really going anywhere. Uh, and you can see here that probably I should have done this all before I put it into the case because now I've got to jam this microcontroller through the tiny little gap in the back into the case. Um, but 
it's always good to have hindsight. You can see I did just about manage to kind of get the lead in here and get it at an angle and eventually managed to get it around the corner. Um, but I realized halfway through doing this that I needed to make sure that I'd also have the USB lead plugged in. So uh, I've got a nice white USB lead and you'll see that I'm gonna plug that in and then try and get it in as well. So thankfully it just about fitted going through the original notch in the case. So all that was left to do then is to get the original back plate that was on the clock when we first got it, this metal thin plate, and get that onto the back. Thankfully it's got a notch cut out the bottom for our lead, which was the original where the original power lead went. It did have a rubber grommet there as well, but I would have to take the lead apart and re-solder it to do that, so I didn't bother with that. And just lined it up on the back here. Got the original screws as well. Didn't really have to get any new hardware for this at all to put it all back together. And then screwed each one of those in. And what we end up with is a really solid case here. Um, it looks like the original from the outside. Uh, the clock face looks like the original. And it was a really easy project to do, to be honest, to find an old piece of engineering done really simply and really well. And you can see finishing the last bits off probably took about an hour to do all this. And there we are. The final clock all together, but not actually tested yet. But you can see it looks like the original. If you've seen our first video where we took it apart, it really does look like a metal face on there. A nice piece of glass, and it's ready really to test on the mantelpiece. So that's what we're going to do next. We're going to show you two really simple demos of it actually working. The first one being a location-based demo. So here we have me driving to work one morning and you can see the clock in the top left hand corner and after I've left just kind of the vicinity of home it moves to travelling and then as I'm kind of driving down the road here, obviously this is sped up because you don't want to watch my commute in the morning in real time, but it stays there while I'm travelling so if it doesn't know an area, it hasn't got an area set it will say I'm travelling, then you can see as I get closer towards the office it will actually start to then move to work as I approach the office. And it all happens pretty quickly after those areas are triggered. It's, it's really quite cool. The next demo is a bit differently. So rather than location trigger, we have a tweet trigger. Here's a tweet I put out over the weekend. And you can see as soon as I did it, it moved to tweeting. It waits about a minute, um, which I've sped up here. And then it goes back to whatever the last location, in this case, home was. Uh, so you can do some quite clever things with if this, then that, not just location based. So thank you for watching. I hope you've really enjoyed this bigger build series. We've had great fun doing it. And I hope you've enjoyed the much more detail we've been able to go into by doing lots more videos. Give us your comments. Tell us whether we should do more of these. And if you've got any questions about how to make your own Wheezy clock, just put them in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe so you see our latest and next videos. But that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Bye.